Well, good morning, everybody. Today's video is going to be how to do a move out. This is gonna be a multi-part series. I'm probably gonna take y'all to multiple move outs. I've got three that I've finished in the last three or four days. I've got two more, one that's due tomorrow and another one that's due by the 29th. And I've got another property manager that said he's sending three of them. So I'm basically all move outs right now. And I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys how I do a move out. So I'm gonna make this a multi-part series. What we're gonna do today is you're just gonna inspect this with me so that you can see kind of what we look for. And before we inspect, I'm gonna read you off the list. So they'll send you a list and here's what mine said. This is just a copy and paste straight from the property manager. It says, this is a move out. Lockbox code is 40857. Please complete the following. Check smoke detectors and replace batteries if needed or unit if expired, very standard there. Clear dryer vent, also very standard. Check AC filter, replace if dirty and provide sizes, also very standard. This whole move out is actually probably gonna be one of the simplest, most standard move outs I've done compared to the others. Uh, replace burnout light bulbs throughout. Paint chips on entry door frame and entry closet door frame. Repair or replace disconnected or missing sink stoppers in bathrooms. And what you might notice when I'm reading these off is, so these guys used to send me very detailed lists. They would say paint over the paint chip on the second bedroom door on the left. Now they just kind of give me these generalized statements where essentially what they're saying is walk around and look at everything and fix what needs to be fixed. Uh, repair baseboard chips throughout, repair major and minor chips and scuffs throughout, repair or replace damaged window blinds throughout. Again, see they used to tell me specifically which blinds. I've been with them wrong, long enough now. They just give me these generalized statements to just fix what needs to be fixed. Touch up stair railing and replace covering for sliding glass window in living room. So I've just arrived at this property. I just brought a couple boxes that I know I'm gonna need in real quick. Um, and you're gonna inspect this with me. So let me show you how we do the inspection. Now this first part normally I would do before I even enter the house, but I wanted to get in and get the video started in there. So just starting outside, you know, we're just looking around at everything, shutters, paint, window screen stuff like that the outside of this one's real nice this is a uh, subdivision very generic subdivision i've got like five homes here and pretty much all of the homes i have here that i've worked on are exactly the same i mean precisely the same there's no difference between any of them which is handy because you kind of know what to expect but let's test the doorbell hear that Always test the doorbell because half of them don't work. Half of them just go, don't, don't. Check the lock on the door. Check that the door shuts. And then I start, okay, there's one light. See, here's a remote. Okay, so that light works. Hit the fan on the remote. The fan works. And then starting just right at the beginning, you know, they already said things like the paint chips, so we already know about that. And we're just gonna start going through, see there's nails and there's holes, there's some old curtain hardware, which I think we're gonna leave. They didn't ask me to remove the curtain hardware, and usually they would if that's what they wanted. So these blinds will get replaced. And then when you're up here looking at these, look at the top of every window sill and make sure that you don't see any water damage because you'll often find water damage there. And when you do, you let them know and that's more money you get to make fixing water damage. Test the blinds, looks like they test good. Look at the screen, the screen looks fine. The window locks are often broken or missing. So make sure you check those. Let's check the next blind. That one opens nice and it stays up. Make sure they all have the wands. Put that guy back down. Probably replace this one too, although we might just bend those back into shape because this is aluminum. Uh, open it, there you go. The wand works. And the wand works. 
check all of your outlets and make sure that the plates are not cracked because they quite often are cracked. Standing back looking at this wall, I'm seeing a bunch of holes, so I'm gonna be doing a bunch of patch and paint. Cable connector looks good. Same stuff. So they said replace the window covering on this. And I honestly don't even know what this is. This is not, I've literally never seen one of these. I don't know if they're more common in other parts of the country, but it, it looks to me like this is some kind of curtain holder. And all of these are just stuck over here. So I don't know if I'm gonna be replacing this whole thing, the whole assembly, or if it's gonna be repairable. And normally I would also check for the screen door right here, but this type of door doesn't take a screen. But you do check the door, make sure it opens and slides well. This one does, it's very heavy. Check the lock, make sure it locks, and it does. And we just continue looking around. Now if you guys noticed, I started at the front door and I started going around the right hand side. And I'm just gonna follow this all the way through the house. That's how you make sure you don't miss anything. There's some damage I'll be repairing. She already told me about the baseboard, so I know I'm gonna be fixing all those. Get some lights on. Let's see, we get all the lights in there. We did, okay. Continuing down, here's another sliding glass door. It's nice and locked. The handle's loose, so I'm gonna put that on the work order. Slides nice and easy. We'll check the screen out. These screens are really a pain in the ass most of the time. This one seems to be working mostly okay. Lock that again. Yep, yeah. lock works good. Normally you're gonna have uh, vertical blinds here. They don't have any and they didn't ask me to put any in, but I am gonna send them an itemized estimate when I'm all done with this to see if they want to add to them. It never hurts as long as you're going to be sending one, which I send them on every job now. It never hurts to just go ahead and offer that itemized estimate. Again, don't forget to look at the tops of the window sills for water damage. This one doesn't have any. This window lock works. Here's the garage. That should be locked, it's not. I don't look at a whole lot in the garage unless they ask me to. That's where you go for uh, paint though. Which by the way, let me show you this real quick. So if you look in here, you got a white ceiling and I don't know, a gray, grayish, bluish wall. You've got green paint here. And then over here, you've got some sort of tan, beige, whatever color paint. Look inside this bathroom and it's a blue, blue paint. So already downstairs, we've got four or five different paint colors. So right off the bat, I'm gonna come into the garage because that is where the paint tends to be. This can is empty and useless. This can is good. That can feels good. All right, so we got a big old bucket of cans of paint and that's a good sign because that might mean that we don't have to go get any matching paint. As long as we're in the garage, let's check the door. Seems to work good. Also checking the light up there. It doesn't look like it's coming on, so that'll be one of the bulbs that we're gonna replace because they do wanna check bulbs throughout. Also, when they do say to check the bulbs throughout, one of the things that always means is exterior bulbs as well. So don't forget to check those. So we got through there. Oh, garage doors guys are required to have self-closing hinges. So just let go of it. There we go, it closes. You also wanna check for weather stripping. That's another add-on that I do quite a few of because they don't notice that the weather stripping is bad. So if this was all like torn up right here, I would go ahead and take a picture of that and put it in an itemized estimate. Everything looks good there. <clears throat> so test the fan. That one's working. Check these every time. Just give them a little wiggle. This one 
is like a tiny bit loose, but I wouldn't say anything about that. It needs to be a little worse than that. And then if you can see, I straddle the toilet and I just kind of rock back and forth just to see if the toilet moves. This toilet does not move. Everything looks good here. Give it a flush. It seems to flush good. You've got your caps down here. It also looks like it is caulked. So that's good to go. If it wasn't, I would, any of these things I'm telling you to look for are things that I would add to an itemized estimate, either at the beginning of the job, if I get here early, or in this situation with this job being due real soon, they're gonna get the itemized estimate with the invoice, but then anything on that itemized estimate that they need to use to close out the entire move out, uh, cause they need to charge the tenant so if and when they do that, they're gonna be able to use my itemized estimate to charge the tenant for work that hasn't been done because they know that it's going to be, when it comes from me, it's a firm estimate that's not gonna change. And then check out your shut off valve. This one's good enough. That's another easy thing to kind of upsell on is if that valve doesn't work then right off the bat you can just let them know that's dangerous because if you can't turn the water off say something happens and it's leaking typically tenants aren't going to be real keen on going and figuring out how to shut the water off to the house check your faucet hot and cold the handle's not loose the entire assembly here is not loose Check your pop-up stoppers. This one seems to be working just fine. Oh, see that? So that I'm gonna take a video of and that'll get sent to them. It is an easy fix, but I don't come in here and just fix everything for free, guys. I fix what they ask me to fix unless or until they finally start asking me to just do the full inspection. But it's not your job to do free inspections for them and do the free work for them. So that's not something I just knock out. They don't want you doing work that you weren't asked to do. So check for door stoppers everywhere you go. This one's fine. The handle is not loose or anything. Latch is retracting well. That probably should get removed. Um, I'll just ask them. That's not as big of a deal. And then check all of your doors and make sure that they shut well and that they actually latch. This one does. She said to touch up the railing, so I'm going to touch up the railing. But we're still downstairs for now. Outlet covers. Let's see, these lights up here. Okay. Looks like I'm missing one light. Let's see if... Nope. There we go. All right, that's not supposed to be green. They're all green. Yeah, none of these houses have green lights in the stairwell. I'll see if I'm gonna do anything about that. <sighs> Come over here, another outlet cover. It looks fine. Everything looks fine there. Next is the cabinets. Check the doors to make sure that the hinges are not loose or need to be adjusted. These are fine. Also check for all your shelves being there. You can sell them on new shelves. Open the fridge. You wanna make sure the light works. If there is anything for the filter, like for this one, I don't see anywhere where it would tell you to change the filter. So we're gonna leave the filter alone, but a lot of times you'll have a light over here for when the filter needs to be changed. And it actually could just be hidden in here where it lights up when you need to see it but check all of these bins. Oh, see that? There we go. So this one's got a crack in it. And actually that entire knob that this is supposed to latch to, that entire knob is gone. So I'm gonna let them know about that. I can probably repair that without having to replace this whole end here. I think I can probably do a little bit of plastic welding and get a knob just like that little knob put back over here. So that's why we do these inspections because the property managers aren't going to find this stuff. Let's see that one, see that doesn't stay in there. Oh, cause it's broken. So here's another one. See where it's broken there. You order these. I use a company called Parts Select is where I get all of my refrigerator parts. Let's 
see and we're missing, there should be a glass shelf right here. So yeah, we're gonna have some stuff for the fridge for sure. Boy, this whole thing is, usually the fridges aren't in this bad of shape. This drawer doesn't even go in there. Where you go, little buddy? Oh, here we go. Yeah, it goes right here. Okay, so we don't need a glass shelf, actually. This drawer slides right into that. So we'll leave that alone. That's in good enough shape. All the shelves are good. Oh, also, I'm not gonna take the picture right now, but when I'm at these houses, I always take pictures of the data plates for the appliances when I'm not filming YouTube videos. And the reason I do that is because in the future, I may get a call. So the ice maker's working good, it's fine. It's full. That seems fine. The light inside the fridge is working. Come over here and check the ice. Oh. All right, we definitely have ice, water. Yep, we have water. That looks good. Check the drawers, make sure they stop when they get to the end, make sure that the face is attached well, make sure that the handles and knobs are on good, wobbling them around, checking the hinges as well. These are all fine. Over here to the microwave, just give it a test. Door. There we go, the microwave works. Cancel. Let's see, also check the fan. The fan's working on the microwave. Check the light underneath. That seems to be working just fine. All right, turntables in place. Everything looks good. That light is also in there. Checking all these doors and stuff. Turn these on. You'd be surprised actually how often the range doesn't work quite right. So we're gonna turn them all on to high and just see that they heat up. Yep, we got them all turning red now. Turn them off and then oven. So we got a light in the oven, that looks good. And then let's go, okay, see if we can turn it off. No, nope, you can only turn it on with that. Timer, start. So let's go to bake. 350, start. We'll give that a minute to start heating up. Yep, nice and hot. So turn the bake off, where is off? Cancel, there we go. So the oven looks good. Make sure this is in its tracks. A lot of times these are not in the tracks. This one, this one doesn't have the same tracks that I'm used to, but it's also not sitting in here very well. I'll come look at that more later, see if it's broken or if it's just a cheap, shitty version. Drawers are good, cabinets are good so far. I've got a GFCI over here. I do have a tester in the car that I'll be bringing in and I'm gonna test every single outlet, but especially the GFCIs. All right, garbage disposal works. The light comes on with the switch. I see a little piece of the packing sticking out of here already, so it's not gonna surprise me if we have a leak under the sink. Otherwise, this seems relatively smooth. And then check around. I don't know if you can tell, but we're missing quite a bit of silicone sealant in this undermount. So I'm gonna write that up and take pictures and offer to fix that for them. Look under the sink. So we've got a little bit of water damage. Oh, we've got a lot of water damage. It's not moldy, but it's definitely damaged. And then you see all of this on this hose. So that's been dripping down from somewhere. And it could very well be that it's coming through here and seeping down the back, or it could be that it's going down through the faucet. But we're gonna offer 
to do something about that. Shut off valve, that one's smooth. That one's smooth. Yeah, I'm not checking these all the way, guys. I'm just making sure they're smooth when they open and close. They all seem to be. Everything else looks good under here. All right. This is the whole inspection, pretty much. I mean, I have a very detailed one I do as well. Pull these out and make sure that they're on the rails good. A lot of times they're falling off the rails and you need new rails. So these all seem just fine. Let's spin that. That guy spins. And that one spins. That's good. I'll also turn this on and test it while I'm just working here throughout the day. Make sure it doesn't leak. These drawers are good. There we go. You also want to check the caulk all along the countertop. This one is not in bad shape. Yeah, it's pretty good. Again, check the tops of those window sills every time. Locking, oh, look at that, the locking mechanism. Uh, well, it's probably fine because the worst case scenario with that is it's just gonna lock when you don't want it to lock. And I've got the island. Outlets, doors, drawers, doors. All these doors are nice and tight. It's nice, usually they're not. So yeah, as y'all can see, I've already found a handful of smaller issues that they didn't find down here, which is why I do these itemized estimates. It's the whole reason that I use the grow plan on Jobber is because I can send that along with everything else and they don't have to fix it if they don't want to but they've got a firm estimate on all of it. So all they've got to do is accept that estimate and then boom, I'm over here. Oh, there we go. We're missing a tip to this as well. So I've got spare tips, but I've also got spare door stoppers. I charge the same either way. Let's check out the ceiling. What you're looking for on the ceiling is tape, like joints where the tape is coming off. I can find them in almost every single home. They don't usually want to fix them if they're not major. But again, I just let them know everything that I find. See, there's going to be quite a bit of patch and paint going on right up here. And then now we'll head upstairs. I hope I didn't miss anything, but this is a pretty thorough inspection. I usually move a little slower when it's just me, but I'm doing this video and I don't want to bore y'all with every, every teeny tiny little slow detail of the inspection. I don't know why these lights are green. None of them ever are, but it doesn't bother me, I suppose. There's a bulb that we're gonna need to replace right there. It's not coming on all the way. The stairs seem fine. I didn't hear any creaks. I didn't see any carpet coming up off of them. And then again, we're just going to make a right right here. We're going to come all the way down. I just see a lot of basic patch and paint. Light works. Check the exhaust fan. Exhaust fan works. Come over here and make sure that all of these turn. Oh, look, see that? So that turns, that turns it on when you pull it off but it's supposed to turn when you have it pushed in. It's supposed to turn this part. I wonder if I can, okay, yeah, I can move it that way. So we may want to sell them on a new knob for this, even though you can technically make it work. It's not working the way it was designed. Dryer seems to work. Yep. All right, dryer's good. The shelf is good. It's not coming off the walls or anything. Got our door stopper. Panel looks fine. Let's see if this door latches. Yep, it latches well. Next, it's just a closet. Check the closets for missing baseboard. A lot of time other handymen will steal baseboard out of the closet when they need to repair part later on in the house. Property managers don't notice, so you can let them know when the baseboard's missing. Latch functions just fine. Moving on. Smoke detectors, I'm gonna get to those. 
There we go. That light comes on. Looks like most of the lights are working up here. Next room, bathroom, lights are working. This is nice and solid. Mm, that's okay. I'll probably tighten that up a little bit for free. Exhaust fan is working. Faucet's working. However, this one is missing the pop-up. It's pretty tight too, so that'll be one of the pop-ups we do. Always come down below, check for any water damage. Now, one of the other things I'll be doing that's not going to be on this video is I go around the house during these inspections and I turn the water on and I just let the water run. That way I can check for leaks later. But as you saw right now, I ran my hand over everything so I know the bottom's not wet when I start out. So I'll know from running that water if that's going to be an issue. Again, straddle this toilet. It's not moving. Check the shutoff valve. This one is smooth. Also, guys, you can check behind these toilets. Often the baseboard is damaged from leaks and whatnot. Or check the edges of the showers here where this will get all damaged on either end. This whole house is really in great shape. Let's check. Okay, see how that's turned all purple? So, I'm gonna put that on the list. As you guys can see, I mean, I've found about twice as much already as what the property managers found. That's on there nice and tight. Oh, let's give her a flush. Flush seems to be fine. Shower head looks good. These permanent shower bars, by the way, I've been installing them in most of the move outs if they're not already present. Um, they keep, they help to keep a lot of the water in the tub because of the way they curve around. Let's turn the bath on. Works on hot and cold. Shower. Shower works good enough. I do see, I don't know if that's non-matching paint or if that's water damage, but I'll send a picture of that and see if they want me to do anything about that. Also check the caulk. This one looks pretty good, but you don't want any mold in these. New tenants don't like mold. The stopper works just fine. Put that down. Check this, nice and secure. We've got our door stopper here. Turn that water off. Next. Next room. All right, ceiling fan is on. If y'all look here, we don't have the bottoms of these chains, so I'm gonna take a picture of that and I'm gonna put that on the itemized estimate. Otherwise, looks good, looks good, looks good. Just a whole lot of little holes and scuffs to patch and paint. Some holes and stuff to patch and paint up here. Oh, look, we've got a broken rod so what i'm probably going to do is steal a rod from one of those downstairs uh, since i know i'm going to be replacing those and then bring that rod up here but first i suppose we should find out if this set of blinds even works come on doesn't work well i can tell you that it doesn't drop down the way that you'd like it to windows fine screen looks fine Smoke detector, check these sliding closet doors. You do want to come down here and check for the guides. Those are often missing and they need to be there or else the doors are going to be coming off. This one's in really good shape. The track is very nice on this one. Closet rods in. Shelf feels pretty sturdy. Yep, shelf is sturdy. Next. Let's check this door. Yep, latch is good on its own. Lock works. Next room. All right. Same thing going on with the ceiling fan in here. The chains are way up there, so I'll also take pictures of that. More patch and paint. None of the outlet covers are cracked here, which is very strange. Usually they all are. This seems to work 
Okay, we've got a bent one down here, but that's just gonna get bent back. That's not really a big deal. It's all the way at the bottom. The wand works, probably. Yeah, I'm gonna take these shelves down and patch and paint. They didn't specifically ask to, but that's stuff that the tenant put in that doesn't need to stick around. Again, check your guides down here. The guides are in place. Door slide real smooth. This whole place seems to be in pretty good shape. Closet rods here, looking good. I'll check them smoke detectors later. Lock works, or does it? Am I locked in the room? There we go. Oh, look, we're missing a stopper here. I think they did mention to replace those. If they didn't, then I'll just put that on the estimate, on the itemize that I'm gonna send them. And I didn't notice this before, actually. See that? We're missing a transition strip here. Oh, and we're missing padding? Look at that. We're missing, god dang, what a piece of junk, man. I tell you what. So we're missing some padding there. They probably won't want to do anything about the padding because they're cheap, but that's all right. There's more of that patch and paint. They said the baseboards are chipped, so there's some of that. These filters. I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but I'm looking at it. It's 20 by 20 by one, and it's two of them. So I know what I'll need as far as purchasing filters. Oh, here we go. See, they didn't call this out. Uh, that's definitely patchable, but oftentimes you're gonna find those like mid-level on the door, kind of like down where people's foot would be because they get pissed and kick the doors. And those are not always patchable. Lock works on here. Everything latches the way it's supposed to. Looking good, looking, oh, look, there's another filter. Whew, they haven't changed that one in forever. So that's gonna be a 20 by 20 most likely, but I'll pull it down and double check first because it doesn't say it. More blinds, boom. Oh yeah, these are all jacked up, you see those? So I'm just gonna replace these right off the bat. lock on the window works the screen right outside the window looks fine same thing yeah see these are getting replaced for sure those are all bent to shit lock works and this screen if you look right there the screen is not in good shape that's gonna be I do screens for a hundred dollars each even though I hate doing them window sill on the top I didn't look at this one. This one looks fine. All right, let's test out. Here's the ceiling fan. There's the lights. I think this one's gonna have three flame bulbs, so there might be a flame bulb over here that's out. Yeah, I see it flickering now. So we'll be replacing a flame bulb on that one. All right. We could use a transition strip here too, see that? See guys, they don't find hardly any of these. We're missing a door stopper here, probably because that's not really a good spot for it. This one should get one of the door stoppers that mounts on the hinge, so it'll just stop the door on its own up here because down there, there's just gonna be so much force applied that if that stop isn't just the right length and if it isn't set up all just right, it's just not gonna work well. So we've got a lot of blinds to do here today. What else do we have? Test the tub. Looks good. Looks good. Stopper works. Lights working. Don't forget to always check the towel bars and toilet paper holders and stuff. They're always broke. All right. That's fine shower door everything looks good i don't see any need for any new caulk out here oh oh there it is okay see again another thing they didn't find the shower head it's not only missing it's literally laying out here on the floor and they didn't say a word about it uh check these magnets and make sure that that's all working good. They're often rusted away and the door doesn't really latch shut. 
Let's check. Oh yeah, well, we got water coming from the shower. Check down here. No drywall damage. Check this guy, nice and tight. This is all very secure. A few bulbs to replace up here. This one is secure, secure. Both hot work, both cold work. Pop-up works. Yep, pop-up's fine. Got a GFCI, like I said, I'll be bringing in my tester and testing all of those drawers all the way out to their stops. It's fine. I don't see any evidence of any water damage under here. Uh-oh. There we go. That's fine. All I care about with these is that they can be turned on and off. And these do. Even if they're not perfect, even if it ends up still letting a drip through, that's okay. You can control a drip. Get a bucket under there. Yep, that one works. And that one works. Some sunscreen. All right. I'm not hearing the fan. Make sure I didn't miss a switch. So that's the lights. And that's that light. So this must be the fan. Here we go, fan on. I'm not hearing anything on the fan. So, yeah, I'm gonna take that cover down and check that fan. I'm not hearing anything. This fan. Yeah, see, I hear this one, and I heard all the other ones. Check your toilet, including the seat. Looks good. Give her a flush. Flush is good. Shut off valve is good. Everything looks pretty fine and dandy in here. Oh, you see that? It's not latching, so I'll write that up on an itemized estimate. I've easily doubled the size of this job. If they approved everything that I put in, I've more than doubled the size of this job, but easily for sure, I've doubled this job with what they're gonna end up approving. Okay. This one, okay, yeah, that'll work. There's gonna be just enough room for me to add a stopper for this right about here. I don't know why we've got a stopper here, or there used to be one, because that's not really gonna stop that door. All that's gonna do is just fling off of it. Closet door latch as well. A lot of times what you're gonna find in these closets is wires coming out of the wall, because people like to run their own networking cables and stuff. I don't see any in here, but that's something that you can know to look for. But all the closet rods are in, all the shelves look fine. So we're getting, oh yeah, see, and this has been rubbing on the wall right there. So we definitely do need to stop her over here. What else do we got? We're just about done with this inspection, I think. Oh, no, we need to go outside, actually. It'll take you into the backyard. Uh, check these railings also to make sure that they're very tight. And this one is. All right. This is also a good spot to look for screens and stuff if you forget to look for them inside. This downspout should be extended out here to the yard. They're probably not gonna approve that, so I'm probably not even gonna put it in. These lights here are almost certainly left behind 
by the prior tenant. So we're gonna put a thing on the itemized to go ahead and remove these because these have just been sort of just hung here. Everything looks real nice on this house. This neighborhood is not brand new, but it's not super old either. And it seems to have been pretty well taken care of. Come over here to the gate and make sure that's nice and smooth, which this one is. I'm surprised this dog house is here because quite a few people these days don't have dogs. It used to be common. I've got plenty of them, but gonna offer to get rid of that I suppose they may not want me to just because they know they're gonna have to pay for it but we'll see these top caps sometimes are off so that's an easy thing to add although all of these top caps look just fine whole lot of aloe out here my goodness so that seems like about everything I need to turn on the porch lights in the front and the back and get those taken care of but yeah at this point now that i've done my main inspection so what what y'all just saw is usually about an hour of my time i usually go much more slowly i'm trying to just make a video to give y'all an idea of what i'm doing but i'll usually have my clipboard with me i'll have my outlet tester with me i'll have a bunch of stuff with me and I usually do it very, very slowly and methodically all the way through the house. And I get all of that written down. I write down all the sizes for all my blinds and everything bit by bit as I'm going through it. So, but yeah, that's about it, guys. I don't see anything else for us to inspect here at this point. But as you can see, this is why I do these inspections. And this is why I use the software I use because I'm probably gonna get a minimum of like 50% of what they originally asked for on this job. I'm probably gonna add that much to this job. So a third of what I end up getting paid for this particular house, a full third of that basically is gonna end up being from stuff that I added, which is very valuable to me. Uh, see, we got a bunch of Christmas lights in the tree here. Probably want to remove that. Yep, and everything else looks real nice. So this is part one, guys. This is the first step to a move out, and then I'll be making some future parts so you can follow me through this all the way from beginning to end. So you guys have a great day.